Ja, das Mike's Daily Podcast. F -f Episode 1470. 1470, and it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley Mont. Today, the disgruntled fiddle player, Benita, the brewmaster. I have dog issues again. <laughs> this time, my dog, Basil. Mike's. Daily podcast. The boxer, he got skunked. The first time he's ever been skunked in his life. Mike's Daily Podcast. Well, since I've had him for the past, what now, seven and a half years, he has something that's in between his ears, and that's this stinky st skunk smell. He got skunked yesterday, and here's something to you, some advice I'd like to say. Podcastro Valley at 6.30 is skunk time. Mike's Daily Podcast. 6.30 in the evening. It's not quite dark yet. They are all over Castro Valley. So Mike's just be careful. Daily Because we were podcast in an open field. Yeah. And he walked over to the fence, and there was a skunk on the other side of the fence. And why Basil didn't get completely skunked from head to toe is because the skunk was on the other side of the fence. And I guess he can only spray through the fence, and it just got Basil's face, which also included his collar and his a bit of his harness. So that was... But, I, you know what? I was like, I'm going to give him a bath. No, wait, you can't give a dog a bath that's just been skunked because it doesn't do anything. It, the, it's still... St oh, but, Mike, there's this uh, concoction you can use of tomato sauce and vinegar and baking powder and soda and everything else. No, it just has to wear off. And several people have walked in as I was telling you these things here at Cafe. Anyway... Cafe, anyway. 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 Hi, Mark. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How y'all doing? It's a disgruntled field player. Tell you what. What? Yeah, well, nearly got skunked once. <laughs> and what we did was we decided to mask the smell by spraying them down with Lysol. Wow. Ooh. That sounds like it worked great. And here's today's podcast picture. Lysol. That smell is even worse. <laughs> I'd rather go with the skunk smell. Really? You can't tell the skunk smell in the Bay Area because everyone's smoking pot. Everywhere you go. They're smelling the... It's 130% true. It is... Everywhere you go, people are smelling... So and the you know marijuana has kind of that smell that's similar to skunk, but Mike, they're vastly different. Those two smells. Then, oh look, who's pouring us a root beer? Hello, Mike. I make the delicious root beer. Thank you for the root beer. It's skunk root beer. Yeah, I can tell. I'm not going to have any. No way. The podcast picture today is of me and the dog, Basil the Boxer, when we were at Half Moon Bay. Oh, what a beautiful day that was just a few weeks ago. Weeks ago, yes. And it was wonderful. I had a thought in my head. Oh, that was the day that I checked out. I love those Coke machines that have every Coke product under the sun and you can access all the flavors using this touch screen. Oh, that's so good. That's what I had at Half Moon Bay after that picture was taken. But, he, you know, you can't get a dog to look at a camera unless you've got a sausage hanging in front of the camera. Mm, that didn't sound right. So what you have to do is uh, you have to just get them right at the right. Oh, my, my, my. You have to get the picture taken right at the right second, and that's what happens. So that's where the, that picture comes from at mikesdailypodcast.com. So you have friends, right? That Friends that, and you, and you hear me say right, right? Because everyone goes right, right? Right. And they also say this a lot. Really? But... So friends 
When you're telling someone, oh my gosh, this happened. My dog got skunked. And friends that go, oh, that sucks. And that's all they say. And they keep looking at their smartphone. They keep tapping away at some stupid app that they got on there. Are those really your friends? Those aren't really your friends, are they? Because I find the friends that are really friends, when you tell them something like, well, my dog got skunked, they'll tell you, well, you know what ha- what you can use for skunk? Or they'll go, oh, yeah, my dog got skunked once. But people that don't add anything to the conversation, that's what I'm saying. People that aren't friends in that way because they don't care, so they don't add anything. But, Mike, what if they can't think of anything to say? Like, you tell them your dog got skunked and they're sitting there and they're uh, perplexed. They've got nothing to add. They just look at you and maybe go, Come on, you can do better than that. They don't know what to say, so they say you can do better than that. Well, all I'm saying is conversations are give and take. And if you're not giving, you're taking. And if you are just sitting there on your smartphone tapping away, you're annoying. And I guess that's pretty much all I wanted to say with that. Now on to this interesting. There's so much going on. One of them is this uh, Heather Lind. An AMC actress, Heather Lind. Heather Lind, she starred in Washington Spies. Oh, The Washington Spies? Wow, she's young. She's only 34. Oh, is this Helena Bonham Carter's daughter? What the? Huh. Uh, detailed her accusation uh, that, oh, George H.W. Bush groped her from his wheelchair during a screening. She's 34. Lengthy uh, lengthy Instagram posts she did yesterday. She said she was disturbed after seeing a photo of President Obama with the 41st president. I found it disturbing because I recognize the respect ex-presidents are given for having served. And I feel pride and reverence toward many of the men in the photo. But when I got the chance to meet George H.W. Bush... George W. Bush's dad for those who maybe didn't know. Four years ago to promote, this was four years ago to promote a historical television show I was working on. He sexually assaulted me when I was posing for a similar photo. He didn't shake my hand. Oh, actually, they have the photo here. He didn't shake my hand. He touched me from behind from his wheelchair with his wife, Barbara, by his side. Wow. Yeah, perhaps you've seen the photo. It's like in a movie theater with this movie theater type carpet. And she's... Wow. Huh. Uh, he, He told me a dirty joke and then all the while being photographed touched me again. Barbara rolled her eyes as if to say, not again. His security guard told me I shouldn't have stood next to him for the photo. Oh my gosh. Wow. So, you've heard maybe this story. This is going to be big if it isn't already by the time you hear me talking about it. Wow. So then... Oh, we were instructed to call him Mr. President. It seems to me a president's power is his or her capacity to enact positive change, actually help people, and serve as a symbol of our democracy. He relinquished that power when he used it against me and judging from the comments of those around him, countless other women before me. Which, wow, what comforts me is that I too can use my power, which isn't so different from a president, really. I can enact positive change. I can actually help people. I can be a symbol of my democracy. I can refuse to call him president and call other abuses of power when I see them. I can vote for a president in part by the nature of his or her character, knowing that his or her political decisions must necessarily stem from that character. And she went on to say that she told her castmates about the alleged assault and that she decided to come forward because of, quote, the bravery of other women who have spoken up and written about their experiences. New York Daily News printed this, and there you go. Wow. Now, George H.W. Bush has apologized, quote, for an attempt at humor. Uh... 
now in this it's a now deleted Instagram post so what I just told you you can't find on the internet accused Bush 93 of touching her she and I told you all about that uh, what is in a statement to the news website Mail Online, quoted by several news outlets, a spokesman for the former president said, President Bush would never, under any circumstances, un- intentionally cause anyone distress, and he most sincerely apologizes if his attempt at humor offended Ms. Lind. Wow. So it was it was a joke, just a joke. Ah, ha, ha. God, is it Mad Men all over again? Gosh. Dang. That's all I got. Gosh dang. I'm shocked. Wow. So, you know what? This has got to end. This has got to end. And I hope this doesn't go away. This sort of people coming out and saying... And and anybody saying, Oh, well, now they're just... They're like... Now they have the courage. Where were they years ago? That's not even in the conversation. Don't even bring that up. Someone at work, a woman, brought that up. Oh, all these women coming out talking about it now. Uh, no, it's it. It took. It's it's a uh, what do you call it? We need the stepping stones to get to something, to expose something, and then make it go away forever because this is horrible. I am shocked that these things happen. And uh, good for Heather Lynn for coming out and bringing all this out. And I hope she has a long, wonderful career in television. I certainly will be watching anything she's in from now on. Well, I may or may not because I don't really watch movies. But I will try to support her and other people who depose the quote unquote humor. What the hell? People using that as an excuse. I'm shocked whoever that spokesperson is should quit and move to another country, perhaps Russia or the Ukraine, because the U.S. government has issued a warning about a new ransomware attack that spread through Russia and the Ukraine. And it's not the Ukraine, Mike. It's just Ukraine. Okay, whatever. And it's other countries around the world. So cybersecurity experts said the ransomware, which posed as an Adobe update. Oh, no. Because we get those uh, Adobe updates all the time, right? Right? And I, there I go. I said right again, and I hate using the word right because everybody uses the right now as a crutch word. No. Right? Ugh. Stop that, Mike. Okay, Mike. Hey, wait. Since this is Halloween in like a week, isn't it? This is Halloween. This is Halloween. I had to get that out. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I had to get that out. I had to do a little singing from... The- Helen Bottom Carter was in that one. No, she wasn't. Tim Burton movies always have Helen Bottom Carter in them, but not that one, I don't think. Cybersecurity experts said the ransomware, which posed as an Adobe update, locked down computers, demanded money for people to get their files back. Ugh. It targeted Russian media companies and Ukrainian transportation systems. Wasn't there a recent Ukrainian attack as well? Cyber attack? It has also been detected in other countries, including Germany, Japan, Turkey, Bulgaria, and here in the U.S. The U.S. Computer Emergency Readiness Team said late yesterday, quote, it has received multiple reports of ransomware infections in many countries around the world. It's dubbed Bad Rabbit. The virus is the latest example of cyber criminals using ransomware to try to extort money from victims across the globe. Two major international attacks earlier this year, WannaCry and Not Petya, caused widespread disruption affecting businesses, government institutions, and hospitals. When Bad Rabbit infects a computer, it seizes files, demands a ransom. I bet I bet Bitcoin's involved in this as well. Uh, a, a victim should not pay up, say government agencies and experts, warning that there's no guarantee you'll get the files back and you'll lose your money. So, yesterday the virus attacked Russian media groups Interfax and Fontanka and transportation targets in Ukraine, including Odessa's airport, Kiev's subway, and the country's Ministry of Infrastructure of Ukraine. 
Most of the victims were located in Russia, but attacks were also observed elsewhere. The number of victims appeared to be significantly smaller than NotPetya attack, which struck Ukraine and spread to other countries in June. Experts said there were no clear links between the two viruses. Now on to the two senators that have been outspoken, Republican senators, sounding an alarm yesterday about President Trump's fitness for office and warned that his actions were degrading and dangerous to the country, an extraordinary breach that threatens his legislative agenda and further escalates the civil war, tearing apart the Republican Party. During an emotional speech on the Senate floor, Jeff Flake, he flaked on his Senate position because he's announcing that he will not seek re-election next year. No, Jeff Flake, he said Trump's behavior is, quote, dangerous to our democracy and summoned fellow Republicans to denounce the president's conduct. He said it's time for our complicity and our accommodation of the unacceptable to end. He added, politics can make us silent when we should speak and silence can equal complicity. Wow. That's kind of like what the actress Heather Lind was saying. She couldn't be silent anymore or complicit. No. No. Where's my no guy? No. Thank you, Timothy. So that is exactly what people are saying. Enough. The charged remarks from Flake, a totem of traditional conservatism, who has repeatedly spoken out about his isolation in uh, Trump's GOP, came hours after Bob Corker, Republican of Tennessee, the senator questioned the president's stability and competence, reigniting a deeply personal feud with the president. President, of course, tweeting back about blah, 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 whatever. Who cares? Now on to uh, Niger. I said Niger yesterday. It's Niger. And now I know. Bum, 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 bum. And the U.S. U.S. military believes someone in Niger, in a Niger village, may have tipped off attackers to the presence of the U.S. commandos and the Nigerian forces in the area, setting in motion the ambush that led to that awful uh, attack that killed four Americans. The officials said the Army Green Berets and about 30 Niger forces stopped in a village for an hour or two to get food and water after conducting an overnight reconnaissance mission. After they left, they were ambushed by about 50 heavily armed enemy fighters who also killed four Niger fighters and wounded two Americans and several Nigerian troops. Details about the attack and events leading up to it have been murky, trickling out over the last three weeks. And that has been a question of why are they doing that? Why is it being held a secret? Uh, Politicians... On the Democrat side are asking questions about that. Now we go to McDonald's. They are preparing to up the ante in the food price, fast food price wars. Uh, The world's largest restaurant chain facing heavy competition in the U.S. will launch a new value priced menu nationally next year. It will offer items for $1, $2, $3. It's their dollar menu. Why am I telling you about this? I'm never going to eat there. Finally, Apple TV 4K is going to help people cut the cord. I've cut the... I have cut my cord. I cut the cord. Cable cord, that is. Not uh, any other cords. Well, there was a cord that was severed from me when I was born, but... We won't go into that because that's gross and full of amniotic fluid. I cut the cable cord roughly... Oh, this person wrote... Three years ago, I've never regretted it. Um, it. And now there are so many ways to get around it. This is a very long article, Popular Science printed. And I I guess I could go into it, but I don't have time. So there's many ways. You know, people watch YouTube. I am on Netflix. That's all I watch. I've been watching nonstop the uh, old TV show called... Enterprise, as we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. Uh, you can watch sports now. On I, I was on YouTube yesterday, and I saw the uh, World Series was on there. If I was into sports, I could have watched it there. Uh, Twitter's c- covering stuff. So there's really no reason to have cable except for internet. And when will cable companies realize that all we want is internet? 
and quit trying to bundle me up with all this other crap that I don't need. Next show, it's going to be the wonderful Madame Ruta Vega, Valentino, Bison Bentley. I gotta go. Mike's TV podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.